Hello, welcome to another vertex animation video, and this time we're gonna use fluids. So here in Houdini, I already have a setup. So when I press play, I have uh, three sources emitting fluids, and they actually collide here uh, in the small class, uh, as you can see. So this is my result, and I want to bring this then into a game engine. So first, uh, I'm gonna quickly here go over the setup to just show you of how this is working again you can get these files as well uh, and follow along so here i just placed three uh, spheres here these are just normal spheres nothing special about them then i'm going to say that these are uh, flip uh, sources so i also use the default values so we'll actually convert them into uh, points and voxels and what i would like to have is a certain direction for each of uh, the spheres so I'm going to transfer the normals in there so as you can see here actually transferring normals from a sphere so I have a one big sphere here and they transfer the normals in these sources so I want to use also a little bit of vex here to say that my velocity my v is equal to my normal multiplied by five so we have some more force there so that's our setup and then we also use a top network where we actually have the simulation so in there what we have here is our uh, fluid sim so we're going to import based on the first context geometry so the first input and for our collision here i'm just going to say that we need to use our uh, geometry collision which i have here on the side which is that class so with that setup we then also add some gravity merge things together then we have a very basic fluid simulation as you could see here so when i play it i have these fluid simulation here so now from that we can start to increase quality to find more things uh, but i'm already going to here do a fluid surface so we're actually going to add some geometry around these points and make sure it's like a fluid surface and for this example i'm going to keep the quality a bit lower so things go a bit faster uh, and as you can see the topology is also a bit uh, lower by default uh, the voxel scale will actually be smaller so it will actually look more like this so we'll actually have some more detail uh, but i'm going to work with two or three just to make sure we have something more manageable now now often what you would do with some in these situations is you would use here the caching node so my simulation is not super complex but if you actually build something i highly recommend you plugging here a cache system in and caching out the data so it's not really real time sort of like trying to uh, store that in your memory but actually storing that on your disk so it's going to be very useful we also have a null node to reference to our uh, vertex animation tool so this is what i'm currently have let's go here to our outputs so again you can add a outputs network so i'm gonna here now place a vertex animation tool and we're going to here first of all switch this to our fluid or dynamic remeshing so this mode is basically when your input has a topology or poly count that is dynamically changing over time so that is basically fluid but you could also use this for other things so it's not necessarily that like you have to use this with fluid it mainly means that your polygons might change in consistency of the amount of numbers so when we enable this we also can change the game engine certain settings will pop up and again i'm going to leave most of it by default something very important we also need to take a look at is actually if i take a closer look at my simulation i only have one primitive and the tool is not going to like that that i have one primitive so i'm going to go back to my fluid sim and actually here under my fluid surfaces we are using here a polygon soup but we don't want that we just want a normal polygon and this will actually turn this into real primitives polygons so that's very important that we actually have numbers for each primitive so because the tool will be able to get that information correctly otherwise as you can see it will actually get number one and as you can see they are all zero so just just to keep in mind to make sure you have that right so once that is done 
we can again have some certain settings. So these are specifically for the dynamic remeshing. So we can set a render pass. And again, hovering over items will actually tell you a bit more about what they are. So here we have two render passes. Uh, we also can fuse points together if you want that. You can quickly disable that here as well. We can export certain specific elements uh, if you want something specific. We then here have our settings for the, all the modes. So, so if you have watched other videos, you will be familiar with it. And again, we have not cached or input. So here, this node, I'm not using the cache input. So I'm going to also let the tool know that I'm not using that. Then we have a lookup table format, which is non-HDR. And then we have our normal textures, which are HDR textures. So this is important to know in Game Engine to import our textures correctly. Uh, then we also here have custom attributes if you want to import custom data. And we also here then have our textures. So I'm going to leave it as it is. So make sure the lookup table is bigger than your target. The tool will prefer that. Then going to inputs here. So these are the inputs you can use in the tool. So of course required will be the position. So each point has a position data. You can optionally add colors, alpha channels, UVs, other things. There are some other things you could do. Then here importantly is the export. So we're going to give this a better naming. For example, export tutorial fluid. So, and then also here, uh, the naming is a referencing now the node name. So this stands for node name. We can give this a, a fluid sim uh, name. Then furthermore, we then have our suffix. So again, if you want to include frame counts or FPS might be useful. We then have our exported information. So we have an FPX file and three textures. So you could choose what you would like to see. And we also here have our uh, lookup table. Uh, then under advanced, I'm not going to show too much about this. We also have here target engine. And of course, if you need some help, you can press this button to open the guide. Now let's export our result. So first of all, of course, we need to set a geometry. So I forgot that. So we're going to here click on this icon and we're going to say our fluid simulation and our output fluid. So this was the no node that I created previously. Now for rendering this or outputting this, we actually need to do this two times. So that's why we actually have this render pass. So the first time we render out, this will be the first pass and this will output a geometry file and or lookup table uh, image. And then we do a second time and then this will actually lock everything and it will output your actual vertex animation textures like the position, the rotation and the color. So we have to render two times. So first of all, make sure you're doing the first pass first and then click on render. When it is done, we can switch now to our second pass and we're just going to click render again. Then again here in my folder structure, so this is the output. So I have a geometry file and I have a texture file. So again, so the first pass outputted the lookup table and the second pass then actually gives us the uh, animated textures. So here I'm back in Unreal in my test scene and let's import our fluid. So from my folder, I can just grab the folders and drag and drop it in here. Then we're going to set some specific import settings. So if you watched the videos before, you know what we're going to use. So make sure the vertex color is set to be replaced. We're going to disable most of the settings here, but importantly, enable here the vertex to absolute. Then also importantly is to import the normals and the tangents. We're going to not going to touch the transform settings. Make sure the convert scene is on. Don't import materials, reorder FBX materials. Um, so these are the settings that I'm going to use. You can also find them again back in the documentation and uh, we can just click import. So now we have all of that. So we have our geometry and our textures. So I also have the same folder structure here. Our textures also need a certain import setting. So if we select our vertex animation textures, not the lookup table, we're going to right click and we're going to use the scripted action and set this to HDR. So if I open my texture now, it will automatically set this to HDR compression and other settings. And also here, our lookup table, we're going to right click scripted action. And this is a non HDR texture. So we're going to say that this is a non HDR texture. So here in Houdini, you can see why I did the non HDR here and why I have the HDR on that vertex animation texture. So these settings will influence what you're going to choose.
So now let's grab my geometry and place it in the scene. So it just it should be just a bunch of like triangles uh, in the air. So you can place it where you want it to be. And also here I have a debug plane in the middle. So if I want to debug values. So let's go back here to my fluids and make a material here. So material, uh, gonna call it fluid. And let's open this material. And we're going to do the very similar thing as before. So we're going to create a, a node or custom material functions for dynamic remeshing. So then we're going to connect these nodes together. So let's start with the normal here. I currently also don't have any color, so I'm not going to plug in a color. So let's bring in our normal. So normal. And it's also saying to us that we need to disable the detention space. So often you will see also the help comments to help you out with certain things. So in this case, disable the tension space. So I'm going to select my material. I'm going to type in tension space and disable this. Now we're going to also input the world position. This is of course for actually animating and moving this. And also here I want to input my custom UVs. So I want to add custom UV channels here as well. So we can do that by again clicking that material. We're going to scroll down and open our advanced properties. So I have it already open. And we're going to say number of custom UVs. And in my case, it will be four. So press enter. And now I have four of these custom UV channels. So I'm just going to connect the numbers. So one, two, and three here. And that is good to go. Uh, we can also give it a certain color. So either you can, again, grab the color from Houdini if you have that. In this case, I had, did not have that. So I'm just going to make it like a bluish color from uh, water. So put it in over here and let's press save. So now we also importantly need to make an instance from that material. So right click, create material instance. And if you open this, now we actually have the ability to input my texture. So enable all of these. And now let's go to our textures and we're going to grab our position. So position or rotation and also the lookup texture and press save and now let's assign that material to my geometry here so fluids instance so as you can see my result is not really what i was hoping for so there are a few things we can do to figure out what's going on so what i would recommend is either restarting in real but before restarting in real i would also double check my uh, textures so what is important in the texture is that the filtering is set to nearest. So here, if I, for example, would search for filter, it's set to nearest. Now I noticed that actually with my lookup table, it's not set to nearest. So that might be able to cause actually issues. So I'm again, I'm going to right click and try here to set this to non HDR. I'm going to open the texture, going to search for filter. Now it is set to nearest. So make sure you're double checking this and also here press save in case it's been not saved. So that's quite important. So at this point I checked my textures and now I'm actually going to restart my Unreal. And now restarting my Unreal, I immediately have actually a good result. So again, it's highly recommended that you either double check your textures and also restarting Unreal to make sure everything is sort of like refreshed and correctly re-imported into your Unreal. And now I have a really cool result. So I have that fluid simulation here in action, real time with vertex animation textures. So now let's go to some of our settings here. So we have our auto playback. Then we have, for example, our playback speed. So if you want this to be faster or if you want it to be like a bit slower, then also interesting is our FPS. So in Houdini, I actually used a lower FPS. The default is 24, so it's quite recommended to actually keep the consistency there. So in Houdini, at the bottom here, we can open our animation settings, and this is our FPS. Then there are some more settings you can play around with, uh, but by now it should be working like as expected, like you could see here. And that was it for this video. We converted a Houdini fluid simulation into game engine to make it optimized and run real time. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.